Hi guys. Posh Mama. I Posh Mama. I see you. Unity Ige. Ola Lekon. Patience, how are you doing? I hope you all are ready for me today. Welcome from yesterday. Hello, church. Good to be here, everyone. Let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Lord, Almighty King, I thank you for how far you've brought us. I thank you for leading us through revelation and scripture. And I thank you as we continue to unfold our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of your grace, one day at a time, and one step at a time. We thank you, Father, and beg you to continue to lead us in Christ's name. Amen. There's something I have come to understand. What I know today is more than what I knew yesterday, which is more than what I knew the day before yesterday, but less than I would know tomorrow unless I am not willing to grow. Growth is expansion, and when your knowledge grows, your knowledge is expanding. And as it expands, your mental capacity to deal with the expansion increases. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. I've had so many questions on this Yeshua issue. And I'm going to answer as many of them as possible. I'm not going to take any new ones because I haven't even finished answering the old ones. Like I said, as many as possible. A lot of people say, let me start first with what's in a name. Uh -uh. He was Yeshua before, now he's Jesus now. Why can't we just have him as Jesus? Hello? Buddha. If you go to the history of Buddhism, Buddhism started about 2,600 600 years ago, while Christianity only started 2,018 years ago. Christianity began on the cross. So, between the cross 2018 years ago and now, Jesus' name has evolved and changed from, G, from um, Yeshua to Isu to Isos to whatever it is until it became Jesus. While Buddha, that is 600 years old, older than Jesus remain the same more or less Islam started about 500 years after Christ and the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam continues to be prophet Muhammad today oh yes there there's a bit of a variation some would say Muhammad some will say Mohammed, some will say Muhammad. But if you hear Mohammed and Muhammad and Muhammad, I don't think you will not be able to, you'll just know that the, person, the different people calling you 
have their tongues twisted by different languages. That is why the Yoruba version of Jesus and Jesu sound alike. I don't know if I'm making sense. But for something to evolve from Yeshua to Jesus, I've got a problem with that. The Buddhists, Buddha is still Buddha. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is still Muhammad. But Yeshua changed to Jesus. And you're not worried. That's one problem. Now, the second thing they say is, What's in a language self? Growing up, who watched Abija and um, Fade Yoloro? Have you ever heard Yoruba incantations before? Arigini, Arigini. Who has heard those things before? Try saying it in English and see whether it carries the same weight. Have you ever seen Fade Yoloro? Fade Yoloro arrives at the scene. And Fade Yoloro starts. Arigini, Arigini. I don't really remember what they say. Ntoba losoke le lumbo. What goes up comes down. Arigini, Arigini. Hello. A lot is lost in the essence of lingual translations. That is why the Brazilians who worship Oshun come to learn Yoruba. Didn't you guys see? Let me play you a video of a Brazilian. Who worships our Orisha? Who worships our Orisha? Oh, wow. Oh, I don't have it here. I'm not following. But who remembers this guy? I need to play this guy for you. If I don't play this guy for you, I can't be ha happy. Choi, 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 choi. Do I have any spare phone there? Give me that yellow phone. Yes. It's not opening on my iPad. Let me see if this will work. Oh, thank God. I have some reception here. Oh, fantastic. We're lucky. This is going to work. This used to be the only iPhone I used to use to transmit um, um, the Free Nation message. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't pick Wi-Fi signal anymore. It's so old. Okay, so I'm waiting for it to launch and um, I'm going to get it here. Uh, okay, there it is. Now watch this guy and listen. <laughs> So, this is a Brazilian guy. I want you guys to take a look at his... Look at what he looks like. Fine, Oimbo, Brazilian guy. He wants to worship the Orisha of the Yorubas. What did he do? Let me tell you, he went to learn Latin. Amarachi, is that what he did? 
What did he do? He learned Yoruba. Prophet Muhammad lived his life in Mecca. He calls Mecca the holy city. Jesus lived his life in Jerusalem, but Rome is the holy city. Are you guys okay? I'll take that again. Jesus grew up in Jerusalem. Where was Jesus born? In Bethlehem. Where is Bethlehem? Where was Jesus crucified? Golgotha. Where's Golgotha? Where did Jesus preach his ministry? And all of a sudden, the seat of the church is in Rome. I want us to go to YouTube. Just open YouTube and type Muslim reciting Fatia. Let's do this together. Muslim reciting Fatia. Muslim child reciting the Quran is reciting Fathia. Okay? I'm just going to play one or two lines from it for you because I know where I'm going with it. He is speaking the original language of Prophet Muhammad wasalam. The prayer he was taught is exactly in the... Of course, he has an English translation, but they do not take the original for granted. Normally, I would have had no problem with calling him Jesus. No problem. Okay, I don't believe names evolve. Okay, but his own has evolved. All right, let's just call. But you see, my problem is intention. My problem is hypocrisy. Somebody is telling me God owns everywhere, both Roman Jews. God does not own a single property on this earth. Don't be a fool. You want me to show you why? I'll show you the Bible. There's nothing that God owns on this earth. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof is the old covenant. You want me to show you the new covenant? I'll show you the new covenant. Go with me to the book of Luke, chapter 4. And Matthew, chapter 4. I don't know which, I, which, I, which should I use. I need to do this quickly. Luke 4 or Matthew 4, either one of them. But let me just start with Luke. Let me use Matthew 4 instead. There's something I'm looking for that's better explained in the book of Matthew. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. But I want to show you this. Because you see, all these things are, are signs of slavery. God doesn't own a single property in the world. Well, he does, but he can't access it because there's somebody who's a tenant here.
If you read, sorry, hold on a second. I want to get the Greek version. I think we should go back to Luke 4. Because that's... Okay. Luke chapter 4, verse 6. This is Satan tempting Yeshua. He says, I will give you the glory of all these kingdoms and authority over them, the devil said, because they are mine to give to anyone I please. I will give it all to you if you worship me. Then Yeshua replied, The scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. I want to take you into the Greek Bible because the earliest translation of the New Testament was in Greek. So I'm going to read this in Greek to you. Luke chapter 4 verse 6 to deal with that. That person, God owns Greece, God owns. <laughs> so where does the devil now own? Uh -huh. Doso ten excusian, Torten hapison, Keten doxen oton, Hoti emoi, Paradentai ke, Ho in thilo di. Domi. Authority, this all, and the glory of it, to me it has been delivered. Emoi paradedotai ke ho ian thilo didomi. And whom, if I wish, I give. Why didn't Yeshua tell? The devil that he was a liar he said the response was i will only worship god somebody said that temptation was before the cross redemption the cross redemption was the exchange of your souls that could not be saved because of the trap of the devil and it was for you to be moved to the world to come I'm going to read something to you. I don't want, you're distracting me with this foolishness that you're taking me back. I'm getting pissed off because you have no clue of what you're saying and you're taking me back. But I'm going to address it with one more Bible verse. And I'm going to use both logic and the scriptures to explain it. Matthew chapter 10 Verse 23. When you are persecuted in one place, run to the next town. Why will Jesus, sorry, Yeshua, why will Yeshua tell you to run to the next town? Why, didn't you why doesn't he tell you to call him? Why does he tell you to call him? Let's go quickly to the book of Acts. Another one. I'm going to teach you today. Because you people just don't like having... But you're dragging me back. This is not what I want to be talking about. But I'm going to have to teach you. Acts chapter 7, verse 55. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven. This is when they want to stone Stephen to death. Gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God and saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, look, I see the heavens opened. 
and the Son of Man is in the place of honor at God's right hand. They put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. If Stephen could see Jesus, this was after the resurrection of Jesus. Why didn't he say, Jesus, save me? Because Jesus was not going to save him in this world. The promise is for a world to come. And here's what the Bible says. As they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord, save me. No. He said, Lord, receive my spirit. And he fell on his knees and died. And as he was falling, he said, don't charge them with this sin. Don't take me back. You, are, you see, you, it, it, it's part of the slavery. You want to consume this world. You want to consume this world, but it is not for you. It isn't for you. Your contract is not in this world. If it were, why were all the disciples killed? I want to ask you a question. Were the disciples killed after... Okay, please. Were the disciples killed after the resurrection or before the resurrection? Mr. Satan telling Yeshua that the world was delivered to him. The disciples, were they killed before? If the world had, okay. Now let's imagine Jesus, Yeshua died on the cross. Please bear with me. I'm going to be making that mistake for a while until I get accustomed to, to this. If Yeshua died on the cross to get the world back from satan why did they kill all his disciples why was peter crucified upside down why were every single one of the disciples murdered except for john who was scarred burned scarred in oil but he survived and went into exile to write revelation why be using this knot on the top of your neck Tazebot is angry with me, but I'm, I hate it when people drag me back. But if I don't explain it to you, in your mind, you'll be believing, hey, hey, I know, he doesn't know what he's talking about, I know. And you gather a few followers beside you and be confusing them into hell. Abiy Amarachi. If, G, if Yeshua got the world back by crucifixion, why were the disciples now all killed? I just read to you the stoning of Stephen. Stephen was stoned after the resurrection on the cross. Why didn't the Holy... He said the Holy Spirit... Well, he was full of the Holy Spirit, but they still stoned him and he still died. He looked upstairs and he saw Jesus... Sorry, Yeshua and God at the right hand of God. Why didn't they come and save him? Somebody there is asking me how about Daniel. It's not only Daniel. It's Adam you will ask me about next and Cain. We are talking of Christians, you are talking about Daniel. Daniel Ko. Mufutauni. Somebody say, how about Shedrach, Mizrak? It's not only Shedrach, Mizrak. That religion that people want to practice, better just go and practice it and leave Christianity. So you want to use Shedrach, Mizrak, and Abednego as references when you have Stephen. They told you that Shedrach, Mizrak, and Abednego had. You see, that's you, you people's brain is, 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 is not fish brain, it's crayfish. Free, fish is upgrade for some people. What am I saying? Prawns. That's the sense that is inside some people's head. In the, in the, in the what is it called, of Shadrach, Mesach, Abednego, and Daniel, the Lord had a different covenant. That was when the Lord owned the earth. But it was delivered to him so we could be rescued away from it because, oh, go and watch the rants on my teaching and stop dragging me back. You, some people can never learn, never. If they sit you down and open your head and start pouring knowledge inside, it will still not stay. I need that Jew. Listen, oh, listen, oh. You are taking us back into Judaism, but you want to worship Judaism through Latin. It's like sense has left you. 
Somebody said coconut head. Coconut has more content than some people's head. Okay, let's even be Jews. How can you be Jew? Has Hebrew as it? Let me tell you, Latin that people are following is a dead language. You know, Latin is dead. Nobody speaks language again. Your Latin is a dead language. Hebrew is still alive. But you are calling Yeshua in a Latin, in a dead language. They said the word of God is alive forever. Yet the language that you are using to call the name of the Son of God has died. But guess what? Oh? Hebrew has not died. Oh. Greek, that was the first translation, has not died. Oh. You are so comfortable in, in, in your error that redemption can never be your portion because you are comfortable in your error. As he has seen that, he cannot get me. He has started insulting me. Comfortable in their ignorance. Some people say comfortable, comfortable. Care. They are rejoicing in their ignorance. At least comfortable, you'll be cool. These people are happy in their ignorance. How come Latin is dead as a language? And that's where we get our translation from. What, what's our business with Latin? The free nation, when I teach you the Bible, I read you the original Greek manuscript translation. What is my business with Latin? What business did the Bible have to be translated into Latin? The Quran is there in the original Arabic. From there you can translate it to any language you want, but it's there in Arabic. Final misconception I'm going to address today because I need to get up and um, do other things is... A lot of people are now sending me messages <laughs> that he frees. I am grateful to God that your eyes are open to the truth. Now you must apologize uh, because uh, Yeshua never said the law is dead. Now here's a mistake. Because his name is Yeshua does not mean we are going back to the law. The law is dead, officially dead dead to Christians. As a Christian, you do not need the law because if you needed the law, you'd have to be a Jew and there are no Latin Jews. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to be a Jew, why don't you cuckoo go and be a real Jew? Which one is this Latin Jew that you are? As in your confusion has no boundary. As in you are as confused as in if you, if you apply to a university to study Confucian, you can't have a better grade than you have already. You want to be a Latin Jew. <laughs> if you want to be a Jew, be a Jew. Go and practice what the Jews practiced. And tell me how much sense it will make in 2018 for you to farm only, for you to farm and after seven years you must let the land rest. But why do some Catholic priests speak mass? You know, because they don't know what they are doing. They do not know what they are doing. Speaking Latin. Ah. Oh, my man, Kakao. Latin. At a point, I used to think that um, the Catholic Church was slightly better. But with this revelation of this Latin. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Another thing I wanted to bring up is, my name is Ifedayo. Every stage of my name has a meaning. Ife, love. Da, D, turns. Ayo, joy. Yo, rejoice. Babe. Break down and chem the limb for me, please, in Igbo. My own is for me. what does Nkem mean? My own. My own. What does D mean? D means it will be for me, it will be for me. 
So each of the, um, what are they called? E, fe, da, yo. There's an English word for it. Somebody help me, my, I'm tired. Syllables. God bless you, Amarachi. That's why I have sharp children. Each of the syllables means something. Right? Ever wondered why? I want to show you guys something. How come the word S U S? I'm showing it to my YouTube people. S U S. Latin translated from Spanish means pig. Sus in Latin means pig. And you have two syllables. G. How many syllables is the word? Jesus. Jesus. Two syllables. The word Jesus has two syllables. And the second syllable means pig. Just Google. See what I googled? S-U-S in Latin. Just type it. Sus. S-U-S in Latin. You see, this is what happens, eh? I hope you guys are seeing it. This is what happens when you jump from language to language and I wonder what you people are hiding. Amarachi, take a look at it. What does it say? S-U-S. Now, there are many conspiracies. Some say the G before the sus, the J-E means earth. And combined together, it means earth pig. I'm not really buying that. You could Google this. Just type J-E-S-U-S. -S. Type earth. And type pig and see what comes out. If you read um, the Sabbath, Sabbath Covenant.com, they say J E G E or G E O means earth, ground, soil, while S U S. Latin, English, Latin means swine, pig, hog. Conclusion, it means earth, pig, or earthly swine, or beast of the earth. The image of corruptible man, the abominable sacrifice of a pig. Now, there are some things I don't want to go into today because it's long, it is plenty, and is all is, is is much for today but i am not comfortable you see somebody now said so all our prayers that we've been praying all our lives and calling the name of jesus you see it doesn't mean your prayers were not answered we all were ignorant at a point before we found the light it only means you need to be careful with the name you're calling. Because Yeshua's birthday was not the 25th of December, but it's Jesus' birthday. Yeshua was not crucified during Easter, but Jesus was crucified. 
Yesh during Easter, that Easter period. Yeshua never worshipped on a Sunday. But Jesus is worshipped on a Sunday. Yeshua was Hebrew. Jesus is Latin. Yeshua exists. Jesus was a fabrication. The son of Yahweh is Yeshua. The word Jesus did not exist until 400 years ago. How can Yeshua be crucified 2018 years ago? But Jesus existed 400 years ago. If you're not worried, I am. I wouldn't really be bothered if there wasn't the evidence of Yeshua. But as long as Yeshua has been presented, why must I hold on to Jesus? Who created the name Jesus? Are they people who are considered to be holy? They were not known, renowned for holiness. They were renowned for crusades. Let's Google when was the last crusade. Let us Google when was the last crusade. Let's just Google this. The last major crusade took place in the Ninth Crusade in 1271 to 1272. So this, these were dark ages. When was slave trade abolished? Let, let's Google that again. When was slave trade abolished in 1807. The name Jesus was invented at a time when slave trade was strong. I don't have a problem if it was invented by the Hebrews. I have a problem with the Latin invention and inclusion. Because that is what took the headquarters of Christianity away from Israel into Rome. I worry. Now, Jesus' birthday. Just Google this with me. When was Nimrod's birthday? I'm not even going to go into when, who Nimrod was. When was Nimrod's birthday? Hold on. I want to show it to you. After Nimrod's death, his so-called mother-wife, Semiramis, propagated the evil doctrine of the survival of Nimrod as a spiritual being. She claimed a full-grown evergreen tree sprang overnight from a dead tree stump, stump which symbolizes the springing forth unto new life of the dead Nimrod. On each anniversary of his birth, she claimed Nimrod will visit the evergreen tree. Evergreen tree. The cedars of Lebanon were not evergreen trees. Pines were evergreen trees. Christmas tree, pine, evergreen, pine, pine. <laughs> she claimed Nimrod will visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts on it. So Nimrod's wife mother 
would leave gifts on a Christmas tree on Nimrod's birthday, the 25th of December. And you people don't want to be woke? Nimrod's birthday is 25th of December. When he died, his mother said a, an evergreen tree rose. And on his birthday, gifts would appear under the grove. Thank you, taste bud. Somebody that has sense. So what you're celebrating on the 25th is Nimrod's birthday, not Jesus' birthday. Sorry. It could be Jesus' birthday, but it's not Yahweh's birthday. Because the moment you gave a date, who decided on 25th? Let's do, let's, let's do, we're asking Google. Who decided? I'm giving you things that you can check by yourself. Decided that 25th would be Christmas. Just, let's, let's do this. The first recorded date of Christmas being celebrated on the 25th of December was in 336 during the time of Roman Emperor Constantine. Rome, Constantine, Rome, headquarters of Christianity, Rome, uniting Jesus with Nimrod, Rome. Was Jesus a Roman? Absolutely not. Who Sell, who killed Jesus? Roman soldiers. Now Roman soldiers choose his birthday or Romans choose his birthday. It's utter bollocks. A few years later, Pope Julius officially declared that the birth of Jesus will be celebrated on the 25th of December to collaborate with the winter solis, solstice and Nimrod's birthday. Hallelujah! I have no problem with Jesus' birthday being the 25th. Thank God you didn't say it was Yeshua's birthday because I'll have a problem with that. Yeshua was not born on the 25th of December and he cannot be celebrated on the 25th of December. Am I saying don't celebrate Christmas? Everything in the world is pagan. If you decide not to celebrate Christmas, you probably won't celebrate anything for the rest of your life. So guys, as I officially round off today, because... I have so much more to do than sit around and talk to people who really don't like to listen. And as you see, when I come, I come with the key to your chains. I unlock your chains with my teachings. But as soon as I go, you look for someone. Please help me wear my chain back. Help me wear my chain back. So sometimes it gets tiring to me. Then all of a sudden, for Christmas, you've got Santa Claus. Santa Claus was one of the 12 disciples, Abi. Amarachi. What are you talking about? Santa Claus was one of the 12 disciples. He was not? Okay, but he must, be, he must have been mentioned in the book of Acts of the Apostles. He was an apostle. Santa Claus was an apostle. So they give you Nimrod's birthday. Coinciding with the winter solace. And they bring Santa Claus. Who is Santa Claus? Where is Santa Claus? Well, he's a legendary figure in Western Christian culture who is said to bring the gifts to the homes of well-behaved children on Christmas Eve, the early hours of Christmas Day, just like Nimrod's mother said. So they created a legend 
to bring the gifts, like Nimrod's mother said. And you all think it has anything to do with Yeshua? Someone said, stop insulting people just because you can't. I'm going to insult you if you don't wake up. Jesus went, Yeshua went into the temple with a cane and flogged people up, and woke people up with flogging. Be grateful that it's only my mouth I'm using to flog you. So St. Nicholas was created to do the job of Nimrod on the birthday of Nimrod as decided by Nimrod's wife and mother I want you guys to have a great holiday. Maybe I should teach Nimrod as a... Since we are drawing near Christmas. Maybe I should teach Nimrod. And all of a sudden, Santa Claus carrying the gifts of Nimrod arrives saying, Ho, ho, ho! Let's Google ho, ho, ho origin. Ignorance will not kill you people. I will not let it kill you. If you want to die of ignorance. So... They say... It's a deep chuckling that comes from the belly. And Santa is a guy with a large belly. So how they brought in Santa, pushed out Yeshua, Father Christmas, God bless you guys. God bless. Another thing is, in the Hebrew Bible, the word for Joshua and the word for Yeshua were the same word. Same thing in the Greek Bible. But Latin just had to come and create a separation. I'm beginning to love this Latin very much. God bless you all.